Hi friend, I'm so glad you're here. Today we're looking at Ruth chapter two. We're on day two. Let's open with prayer. Oh Lord, we praise you. You are our pillar of strength. You are an ever present help in times of trouble. Lord, may we walk in the light of your presence today as we dig into your word. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts, we pray in Jesus name, amen. Okay, here we go with the reading, starting in verse 8. I'm on page 68 of the workbook. Then Boaz said to Ruth, Now listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink that the young men may have drawn. Drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. And how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. Okay, what a beautiful story this is. Uh, today, we continue with our inductive study of asking questions. And I was thinking this morning as I began this that it really is kind of about writing your own study questions. So I, I hope that you've taken time to do that. Um, I noticed right away that this is a conversation. This is a moment like where the camera zooms in on Boaz and Ruth. And we see right off the get-go that Boaz, and remember his name is means pillar or strength. I love that. And he gives Ruth some commands. And he refers to her using this term, the same term of endearment that Naomi did uh, in the scripture we saw yesterday, my daughter. I found that interesting. And I, I just wondered, why does he use this term of endearment? And friends, sometimes in scripture, it's not exactly clear. But some of my thoughts included, number one, he is kind and compassionate. I mean, at the end of this passage, Ruth says, oh, you have comforted me. You have spoke kindly to your servant. So that term, my daughter, I think just just oozes compassion, right? Oozes kindness. And then number two, I think it's clear that Boaz is older, just like Naomi, and old enough to be Ruth's father. Uh, I feel like, at least I put this, I don't think the young men in charge of the reapers would use uh, this term, right? My daughter in speaking to Ruth. So just notice that. I love the, the, the term of endearment there. And then he goes on to give Ruth some commands. And so I made a list of these commands. I just asked, what are the commands? And I answered my question. Uh, number one, he says, listen, which I put that, I put some of these in my keyword column and I define them. And listen means to pay attention. Some of you probably sometimes see my little dog uh, walking around here. And uh, it, when I want to get his attention, I'll take a treat and I'll say, watch me, you know, like pay attention, go, go, see here, I'm watching you. And so that's what, what Boaz is saying. Listen, pay attention. And the next one, number two, do not go to glean in another field. Uh, do not go. Don't move away. Don't, don't go in another direction. Number three, keep close, a meaning cling, stay, like cling to this field, cling to my young women. 
Number four, let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping, all right? So keep this field, keep this area in your sight. Uh, this is my field. I want you to keep this in my sight. Number five, go after them. Follow, travel behind them. And number six, go to the vessels. Like when you are thirsty, go to the vessels, travel, move towards them. And then last of all, drink, drink, take in the water, take in the liquid. All right, so those are some imperative commands that Boaz gives Ruth. And then I asked the question, why? Why does he do that? And I came up with several answers that come from this passage. Number one, Boaz is clearly concerned for Ruth's safety. Uh, he says, have I not charged the young men not to touch you? So this alludes to she could be in danger going to another field, correct? Uh, number two, uh, he takes notice of Ruth's vulnerable situation. And he even recognizes what she herself is feeling, okay? Um, where did I get that from? Oh, take notice. What, what verse was that? Uh, she says that. Uh, she fell at his feet. Sorry, friends. The Lord repay you. Oh, this was up. Okay, earlier. Verse 10. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me? Okay, so that's where I found this. Take notice means to detect something accurately with the senses. Detect something accurately with the senses. Doesn't the Lord do that for us as well, friends? So Boaz has uh, not only seen Ruth, he has taken notice of Ruth's vulnerable situation and taken notice of what Ruth herself is feeling. She is feeling distressed about her situation and he notices that. And the last of all, why does Boaz speak these commands? Commands to Ruth. Uh, he has heard of Ruth's reputation. That was from verse 11. Uh, he says, look, all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. And then he uh, pronounces this blessing of the Lord upon Ruth. Uh, not only does he seek the Lord's blessing upon her, but he's doing his part to bless her and to, to provide for her as a follower of Yahweh. Friend, I just, I love this. So main point for today is I think Boaz offering kindness, offering protection to Ruth by commanding her to remain in his fields to glean, right? All right, application. You know, we always, they, there's many things to observe here. You may have observed more things or other things than what I did. I, I did observe more things, but I want to try to keep this video to a reasonable amount. But uh, application for me, I just asked this question to myself as I was talking to the Lord this morning and looking at the scripture. I'm like, wow, isn't Boaz a savior-like figure? Isn't he a Christ-like figure in this passage? I mean, friends, doesn't Christ say to us, or I made this personal this morning. Now, Carmen, listen, my daughter, do not go to glean in another field or leave this one. Listen, Carmen, don't leave my pasture. Don't go gleaning or following after others in another field. Keep close, keep close to me, keep close to my followers. Stay in my field. Let your eyes be on my field uh, that my followers are reaping and go after them. 
uh, have I not charged the young men not to touch you? I, God provides protection for us. He is conquer over the evil one. And uh, he says, when you are thirsty, go to the vessels. Go drink from me. Like I am the water of life. Drink, drink, drink. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm just like, oh, Jesus, he really is our Boaz. Uh, he, he is our pillar of strength. We only need to come and find refuge in him. We only need to come to the shadow of his wings and take refuge. <laughs> I love this story, friends. I look forward to unpacking more tomorrow.